Well, thank you very much for joining me in this video. I want to take another look at Tressa. We've done it once already, and we want to take a look a little more in depth. As you know, Tressa is now in place, been in place for three or four days, and it's brought about some significant changes to what we were used to under the Real Estate and Business Brokers Act. It's got such things as self-represented party. That's new. It's got such things as designated representation. That's new. Such things as open offers. That's new. And then it's brought about some mandatory forms like um, RICO information guide and like the information and disclosure to self-represented parties. So there's all this stuff that's covered in the legislation. And I would think that you probably at this point have a pretty good understanding of the legislation. Now I should say, if you don't, I've developed a course, the Tressa course, and I've rolled out to agents, my agents and some other agents inside the board. And I'm doing it once more tomorrow. That's December the 5th at 10 o'clock in the morning. It's a fairly in-depth course. It takes about three and a half hours. You're welcome to come whether you're part of REMAX or not. And as I've said before, I'll never use this as an ploy to try and recruit you or make you feel uncomfortable. I won't do that. I'd love to have good agents in my office, of course. But this is my way of giving back. The same way I do these Monday morning videos and so on. And so if you'd like to come, give our office a call, 905-641-1110. And that way we'll make sure there's a spot for you. That's tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Okay, so we've covered the legislation, and I think we've done a pretty good job, and I think the uh, Aria's done a pretty good job, Mariko's done a pretty good job of rolling out the legislation so most people understand the concepts. What's vague is how do you implement the concepts? Where do you go from here? How do you get started? Well, to answer that question, you need to understand that under Tressa, there are two categories of people that would be interested in real estate. There are clients and there are self-represented parties. That's it. Clients, self-represented parties. And to create a client relationship, it's fine if we sign somebody up, a listing agreement or a buyer representation agreement, and that's pretty clear. But client relationship agency can be created in writing, can be created verbally, or it can be implied. And so by your actions or by your relationship with people, if you are providing them knowledge, skill, and judgment, and they are relying on that, or you're giving them services and opinion and so on, you can create agency even though they weren't intended to be a client. And Rico's concerned about that. So they said, before you get to that stage in a conversation with somebody, we want you to go through this guide called working with a realtor and make sure they understand the options and so they can make an informed decision. So that's the first step, all right? They want you to provide the guide, they want you to go beyond that and explain the guide, and then they want you to seek acknowledgement of the guide. So they don't want the person to be a client when they want to be self-represented. One of the challenges, though, is you go through this working with an uh, with, with a, uh, information guide, and you have them acknowledge that they've read it, been explained to them, but nowhere do they acknowledge that they don't want to be a self-represented party, they want to be a client. And I would strongly advise you to continue using the Form 812, working with a realtor. Now, Rico said, we don't care whether you use it or not. You have to use the information guide, the other one's optional. But the reason why I like the working with a realtor, even though it's the same information going over again, it's reiterating, multiple representation and the pitfalls of that and so on is at the end of that it says my i i want to be represented and there's a place for them to initial that or they don't want to be represented place for them to represent uh, to initial that and then it says at the bottom this form is for information only and is not a contract one of the things i'm afraid of is going to happen moving forward is salespeople are going to say, well, I know I can't work with these people unless they're a client, and so I'm going to put them under a buyer representation agreement, and they're going to be signing people up under buyer representation agreements when the people don't want to make a commitment at this point. They don't know if that's the agent they want to work with, and yet they feel that they have no choice, or maybe they don't even understand what they're saying. And I want you to understand, you do not have to sign them up to a contract. You can pop them in your car and show them property, you can discuss the real estate market. You can discuss the pros and cons of one property over another. You can talk about prices and so on with them because they've indicated that they want to be a client, that they don't want to be a self-represented party. And then at some point in time, if they're going to work with you, 
sign them up to a buyer representation agreement so that it's a binding contract, the same as you would with a listing agreement if it was a seller. All right, but the one problem I've got with this, and I just want you to tuck this in the back of your mind. What we've got now under Tressa is we've got self-represented party or client. But the person who is under the category of client is not necessarily your client. And there's no differentiation paper-wise, and we need to understand that. RICO defines a customer as somebody who is receiving services but are not under a representation agreement. And they're adamant that you can't call somebody a customer. They're saying the person who used to be a customer is now a client. It's too bad we don't have that third category. See, if I've got a designated representation in my office and I'm showing another agent's listing, that person is a client, but they're not my client. That's why I don't have a dual agency or multiple representation. If I am showing a buyer a listing with another firm, that seller is a client, but they're not my client. And we got to be careful that we don't cross over the line and say a lot of things to somebody when they're not uh, in a representation agreement, written representation agreement with us. We understand they're a client as opposed to being a self-represented individual. But keep in mind, you can work with them. And at some point in time, you're going to ask them to make that decision. In between time, they're a client, but they're not necessarily your client uniquely represented. I hope that makes sense. It's a little bit convoluted, and I think there's going to be some purification of forms as we move forward, but that's where we are now. So keep in mind, the first thing you need to do when you're talking to somebody, engage in a conversation before it gets too in-depth or before you show them property or push them over the line, make sure you go over Rico's information guide, get them, uh, explain to them, get them to acknowledge it, and use a working with a realtor, get them to initial that as well. Thank you very much for investing your time. Look forward to talking to you again next week.